On today's Saturday news, WWE announced a new women's US championship. The Elimination Chamber 2025 is confirmed. We've got the latest on WWE ID stuff. And the OG Bloodline are back. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? My name is Phil Chambers. I'm joined by Gareth Morgan to talk all things from wrestling news. But first up... We got another belt, because if there was one thing in wrestling that we really needed right now, it was another belt. And oh boy, it's uh, it's an interesting one, actually. It's quite mm -hmm. interesting, because it's something that was dropped onto SmackDown last night. Uh, they mentioned it, that we are going to have a, a women's mid-card title. It's something that a lot of people have been talking about for, for years now, saying that like the, we, it's something that we want to throw into the, the main roster. Obviously, at NXT have got the Women's North American Championship, so this is the first main roster uh, mid-card strap. So that's, yeah, it's very interesting. And they dropped this in with Nick Aldis doing a bit of a chat, a bit of a, a vignette thing, saying like how they've got such an incredible women's division. They've like broke, broke through like glass ceilings and just been awesome, really. And they, they deserve this this next title to fight over. And it's going to be, it sounds like it's going to be like a, a, a something like a standard bearer thing, like a, a work rate kind of title, where it's like you got to prove yourself to seize the opportunity, that kind of stuff. And it looks pretty, but it is literally just the US title, but with a with a white strap, because that's what WWE do now with women's belts. They go, oh, we've got the men's design, and feminine is apparently white. Like that's 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 how WWE see it. So they've uh, they've gone that route with the actual design. Uh, Triple H then went on to X, and he said the women of WWE continue to show that they are the very best in the business. The Women's United States Championship will showcase their continued effort. So who's gonna step up? and take it. There are a lot of incredible women in WWE right now. I literally, just before we came onto this video, I just finished watching the uh, the, the the main event that went on at NXT, was it? The the, the women's... Easy ten, dub. Like, yeah, easy, easy dub. Easy dub. Easy dub. Yeah, the 10-woman epic tag team match. And I was like, you know what? Any of those women could get called up tomorrow and fight for this kind of belt, and it'd be great. And I'd be well into it. So they, they, they're not lacking for people to go for this belt, but there is that discussion as well of, well, just, just maybe just book programs that don't involve a belt and just have really compelling stories there and use all these talented women. You don't just need a belt to fight over. It is what it is. We've got it, so we have to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm interested to see what they do with it and whether this means, like, whether it's going to be a floating title that goes across Raw and SmackDown or whether they're going to do an Intercontinental Championship women's belt for Raw as well. Um, I don't really mind the white belt just being the same belt as the guy's belt, but with a white belt because, I mean, most belts look better with the white straps. Anyway, make them all white. Make of... them all white. I don't <laughs> exactly. And it just it has parity between yeah. the two, and it's way better than like the divas title or yeah. anything like that that yeah. they have done in the past. So it's a huge step up in terms of that. Um, but, but yeah, very intrigued as to what this is going to be. They're obviously very cagey about like what they're going to do to actually crown the first champion mm. now. Like that could that's completely up for grabs. But I mean, it'd be a great sort of statement of intent to sort of bring someone up from NXT that would then do this um, and win the title. Um, that would be amazing, but then you've got like a Bailey or something that's kind of desperate for something to do. So, uh, so, so you got an opinion on who should be the, the new Women's United States Champion, yes? Apparently not Bailey. No, that's it. <laughs> so yeah, like I'm intrigued by it, but at the same time, like you say, like the booking of the women's division hasn't been amazing sort of down across the whole board. Obviously it's had some highlights, but the sort of depth of it hasn't been booked as well as it has been in the past. So I think that's the thing you need to fix before just dumping another belt in there as like mm. a stopgap fix kind of thing. But if yeah. that increases the amount of time and effort that they put onto the women's storylines, then that'd be great. But if it turns into a women's tag division thing where it's just like a thing that's there and is never really put any focus on, then that's not so great. So the things they need to fix before this, I would say, but it's it's a nice statement of intent going forwards and hopefully this is the sort of catalyst for change in that mm. kind of area. Is what I'll say. Yeah, it's um, a positive take, that Phil. Very good. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of positive, uh, Elimination Chamber for 2025 has been announced, uh, and it's going to be in Toronto in a massive ass stadium in the Rogers Centre on March 1st. Okay, I, did, I, did, I didn't know that was the design, Phil. I'm going to have to double check this. It's, it's a massive, massive ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it on dumps. Google Maps. It's just a big ass. Uh, it is the site of WrestleMania 18 and WrestleMania 6. Uh, and WWE haven't been back there since WrestleMania 18, so it's been a long time since they've run that building. Uh, but it, this does seem to be 
the continuation of them trying to up Elimination Chamber, like up in the tiers of uh, premium live events, or whatever mm. they call them now. Obviously, they had Elimination Chamber in Perth this year, and that was in a stadium show too. And now they've got Toronto, which is a stadium show. They're putting a big heap of um, like effort and promotion into these other sort of premium live events. Obviously, mm. Royal Rumble's going to be in a stadium, then Elimination Chamber's going to be in a stadium, and then WrestleMania is going to be in a stadium. It's like a hell of a run of stadium mm. shows. WWE are going big and not going home, apparently. They're just going to different yeah, countries, okay. which is fine by me because the crowds in these places are always absolutely fantastic. It is a bit sad for us because there was rumours that it was supposed to be in either Manchester or Birmingham, so we're not getting it, which kind of sucks. Um, but great for Toronto. Obviously. Yeah, good for Toronto, <laughs> not good for Manchester where I am now. But yeah. it is what it is. I mean, it's it's really interesting this because I, I remember like a couple of years back, I think I think it was Nick Khan saying that they were trying to push Money in the Bank as like something that was going to become like as big as one of the, yeah. the big four things. So now it feels like they've. Not pivoted because Money in the Bank they're still like making a big deal out of, and th- they, I think they're in was it Canada this year, and then they're in London the year before. Like they, they they've made a big deal out of that, but it feels like Elimination Chambers now maybe just been something where they've gone. Oh, actually, I think people want to see the the big sell more than people falling off ladders for a big stadium show. So they really pushed that Elimination Chamber last year was a great little like step on the road to WrestleMania. I say little in a massive stadium. Like it was, it worked. It, it really worked. It, it felt like a bit different, a bit fresh. And I was like, okay, I quite like this. So if we go down a similar route, but it's in Toronto uh, for the for the upcoming one, I'm I'm there for it. I'm excited. It'd be it'd be interesting to see what matches are going on there at the Toronto uh, the, the event because obviously you've got a lot of great Canadian stars in in WWE. Whether they're going to be pushed in around the main event scene at that point, whether yeah, it, it's it's going to be. It'll be a big event. It'll be a big, cool event on the road to WrestleMania. With the road to WrestleMania, it's also going to be going through Europe this year. So we're so excited about that. Hopefully, we can get in and around some of those shows because that's crazy that that's happening. I'm still trying to get my head around the fact we're going to have like Raws and SmackDown in the UK just before WrestleMania. Crazy, crazy stuff. Speaking of like crazy things that are going on right now. I obviously got the WWE ID program, which is like huge for WWE and just for the industry. Really, it's something that like we've we've not seen before in terms of like WWE just playing nice with with independence to a certain degree. <laughs> to, to, to a certain we'll degree, see. Yeah, we'll see. yeah. For now, for now, like it just seems like they're making better noises than they have in the past. Let's say he says before he now says what he's about to say. Um, so yeah, in the latest Wrestling Observer, uh, Dave has just offered a few little bits of information additional additional things about this this program about the way it's going to work and yeah there's a lot really so uh the independent talent from these schools um or elsewhere like on the in the independent scene um that WWE feel have like a lot of potential they will be signed as early as possible so that that's something that's going to be like uh that's like a, a bit a bit of a break not breaking news but like something that's quite interesting about this because uh, before a lot of people were thinking that those with potential would just be like invited to tryouts and like then WWE would figure out like oh do we want them like that's the way it's kind of worked over the years they've gone oh we'll bring you in see if you work, like you're working with us but it seems that now like they're gonna be looking at people and then like if they like them pretty early on they're gonna go yeah there we go we'll sign you um, but it, the deals themselves um, if they have potential like they're, like, they're gonna be like worth investing in they'll be signed to deals that are similar to like the nil or the nil deals whatever they call like the the ones that they've been doing with like all these athletes haven't they that they've been bringing in like they're, they're not like full main roster nxt contracts they're, they're like the developmental deals so that's what they'll be uh they'll be going for um in the case of like independent wrestlers the idea is that they would continue training at the affiliated schools and then working on independent shows as well so that's what i mean by relatively playing nice with independent shows they're still going to let these talents uh, go and like go out there and work and that is obviously a total change from what we've seen in the past with WWE because um, they've just not let their talents go and work on independent shows but that since like triple h has come in like we've seen them working with everyone really apart from like one specific company obviously um so the idea and speaking of that company is that if aw new japan tna somebody like that come in and offer these talents a contract like after they've been obviously signed to the nil not the nil the um the, or, or, while they're WWE on this, ID. yeah, while they're on this, a lot of different terms going around. So yeah, while, while they're on this WWE ID thing, uh, WWE has a right of first refusal. So, and at that point, they can either 
drop them, say, no, nope, you're not part of the ID thing anymore, or they can just sign them straight away and then bring them into the performance center and then do whatever. So that is, uh, yeah, quite interesting. Uh, in terms of like the people who uh, have been announced, there's been a couple already that have been announced for the WWE ID thing. So you've got Zeta Steel, uh, Bryce Donovan, Cappuccino Jones, my favorite name, name of all time. Awesome. Uh, Jack Cartwheel as well, another cool name. And uh, Zara Zaka. Uh, so the, I think that's how we say it, Zaka, Zaka. Um, so yeah, a couple of times so there'll be a lot more. I imagine that are going to get announced going forward. It's, it's really like, it could, it could work very well this it could be something that like helps a lot of young talents get on the ladder and like get into WWE and or just get a bit of exposure whatever it is or it could go disastrous disastrously wrong like we don't know at this point it is a bit too early to tell but it's it's relatively new and a bit different so i'm, I'm willing to like give it time but probably similar to like the the women's us title at this point just willing to give it time and just see what happens yeah. with it Fair. My mind with this just goes back to the WWE UK stuff, where obviously they opened up the UK Performance Centre and then they signed a bunch of UK talents from the UK independent scene. Not that we're bitter that they signed all of our guys or anything, uh, but in that they promised no restrictions with where they could work and then placed loads of restrictions on where they could work and they basically couldn't work anywhere that didn't that filmed anything. So yeah. it was the smallest of smallest independent shows is where they allowed to do because it's the independent scene everyone films everything because they need to make as much money as mm. they possibly can out of these shows so of course they film it um, so there were very much restrictions put in place but I'm gonna keep an open mind about it and see where it goes uh, it could go the way of just WWE trying to gobble up the entire wrestling scene it could work out really really well for the independent stars it could go either way so I'm gonna keep an open mind about it and hope for the best there's really no middle ground is there <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all really. or nothing. <laughs> uh, but hopefully it works out for the talent mm. involved at the very least. Um, obviously they're working with some good schools because they're working with all the schools run by the WWE guys. So you know that at least people are getting trained right. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll keep yeah. it in mind and we'll yeah. wait and see. And hopefully some good talent comes out of it. Which yeah. it kind of has to because, I mean, if they're casting that big of a net and still allowing people to work and sort of get their reps in elsewhere, it should work out quite well. But we shall see might not work out so well for like the, the likes of AEW or mm. <laughs> yeah. I know that's, I don't think that's coincidental is it hmm. yes uh, but to bookend this news video with Smackdown news mm -hmm. the OG Bloodline are back it finally happened on Smackdown last night there was obviously a big swerve moment thing where Solo Sokoa was having a, a acknowledged ceremony thing whatever it was called you know uh, so, you know have you never had an acknowledgement you know, ceremony of those. Phil yeah. <laughs> one of those uh, trying to get Roman Reigns to acknowledge him as, as the true tribal chief, obviously. Um, and then it, Roman Reigns challenged him to a one-on-one -on -one match to decide who was going to be the tr true tribal chief. And then there was a big swerve because uh, Solo wanted to do war games and he announced Sami Zayn on his team for war games. But obviously it was a big switcheroo and Sami Zayn turned on them and they all joined forces at the end and shoved their wands in the sky. And the OG bloodline are back, flipped around to Babyface, obviously, to take on the evil bloodline. Um, I know, oh, uh, evil salty. Does not like, like the evil bloodline. <laughs> Um, but it's finally happened. We are indeed getting war games. It's not like properly been announced, but they kind of agreed to the match at the end mm. of SmackDown. So it's gonna happen. We're gonna see the Bloodline versus Bloodline in war games, and it's gonna be amazing. Let's face oh, it. it will. But I, I was really mm, like, my mind started working because obviously. Solo mentioned you, we're going to need five people, really, didn't he, all together, and obviously brought Sammy yeah, in. Yeah, we kind of tease. But then Sammy obviously then went over to the bloodline, so I was like, oh, they're just going to drop that now, and it's a four on four. It wasn't really made clear, I don't think. I don't know if there's stuff online there that's like, if there's been behind the scenes stuff or whatever it is that's dropped and made Not it a yet. bit clearer. But I, yeah, I don't know. Like, the four on four just seems to be right, doesn't it? Like, I, I think adding any other elements to it could get a bit messy or maybe it's gonna be messy anyway <laughs> yeah yeah maybe they bring kevin owens into the, the new bloodline and have cody on the, on although the that would be ones. weird with this this kevin owens character yeah. he's still anti-bloodline but Don't he's like, like anyone 
Yeah, but maybe there's the chances of like a Hikaleo or something like that for yeah. the new bloodline, but then I don't know. Maybe they're bringing Cody Rhodes for the. <laughs> maybe they bring in Cody and then the Kevin just comes in and just, just starts going nuts inside the in the inside the big war games thing. That could be. That could be something. Whatever happens, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, right? yeah. It's going to be great. That's what we want. We want bloodline <laughs> chaos and a yeah, wonderful just mess. Absolutely insanity. I'm up for it. Hell yeah. Let us know down in the comments what you think of the War Games match and who you think should be the first Women's United States Champion. And then follow us over on the old social medias. You can follow me at Phil My Chambers. You can follow Gareth. At GMorgan04 on X, at Gareth Morgram on Instagram, and then at fitness.focus.gm within that Instagram for me lifting weights and trying not to cry. There it is. There it is. Do that and have yourselves a bloody good day.